Let's look at two more examples on mathematical induction. These look a little bit different than the ones we've seen already. The first one, prove that for all natural numbers n, pn. So we want to prove that pn is true, and pn states that 2 to the power, 2 to the power n, minus 1 is divisible by 3. So let's take a look what we're working with here. We're saying for all natural numbers, this must be true. So if I calculate 2 to the power, 2 to the power n, minus 1, I should get a number that's divisible by 3. So we start the same way. We've got pn, so we say, excuse me, let's get a different color there. We say, show p1 is true. Right, to show p1 is true, I'm looking at 2 to the power, 2 to the power 1, minus 1. So that's 2 to the power 2, minus 1, so it's 4 minus 1, so that's 3. And we know 3 is divisible by 3. So I can say, therefore, P1 is true. Next, we assume PK is true for some K in the natural numbers. All right, what would that look like? 2 to the power 2 to the power K minus 1 is then divisible by 3. Well, what does that mean? That means there exists some b in the integers such that 2 to the power 2 to the power k minus 1 is equal to 3 times b. So that means 2 to the power 2 to the power k is equal to 3b plus 1. We might need this later. Well, we probably will. So our last step is to show that pk plus 1 is true. So now we need to show that pk plus 1 is true. So what are we looking at? We're looking at 2 to the power, 2 to the power k plus 1, minus 1. Now let's just look at 2 to the power k plus 1. That means that's 2 to the power k times 2 to the power 1. So that one we can write as 2 to the power, 2 to the power k times 2, minus 1. Which we can write as 2 to the power, 2 to the power k, to the power 2. Exponents, we've got a Exponent to a power, we multiply the exponent, so it's all good, minus 1. Now, the reason I wrote it like that, because I've got something about 2 to the power 2 to the power k. 2 to the power 2 to the power k is 3b plus 1. So that's 3b plus 1 squared minus 1. Multiplying that out, that's 9b squared plus 6b plus 1 minus 1. So that's 9b squared plus 6b. Well, that's not bad. We can take 3 out as a common factor there. And then we have 3 times 3b plus 2. 3b squared plus 2b. There we go. So I've got 3 times something. And I can say that 3b squared plus 2b is also an integer because I know b is an integer. So therefore, I've shown that 2 to the power, 2 to the power k plus 1, minus 1, is divisible by 3, because it's 3 times a number. That's an integer. So therefore, I've shown that pk plus 1 is true, and therefore, pk, uh, pn, is true for all natural numbers n. All right, so the second example, take a look at this one. This one says for all natural numbers n greater than or equal to 4. So it works from 4 onwards. We don't start at 1, we start at 4. So for numbers less than 4, you can check it won't work. Our statement pn is n factorial is greater than 2 to the power 2. If we just look at 3, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. 2 to the power 3 is 8. 6 isn't greater than 8, so it doesn't work for 3. But our statement says it works for 4 and everything bigger. So let's show. So the difference here is my first step is to show that P4 is true. Well, our previous examples was for all natural numbers starting at 1. 
So we showed P1 is true, but now we're starting at 4. So our first step is to show P4 is true. So just take note of that difference. So what does P4 look like? We look at 4 factorial. 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. And we're looking at 2 to the power of 4. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. And 24 is greater than 16. So we're good. Therefore, P4 is true. And now we assume that PK is true. For some K greater than or equal to 4, where k is a natural number. So not just some natural number, one that's greater than or equal to 4. All right, so what does that mean? That would mean that k factorial is greater than 2 to the power k. Our last step would be to show that pk plus 1 is true. So we want to look at k plus 1 factorial, and we want to look at 2 to the power k plus 1. We will do that on the next page. So if I look at k plus 1 factorial, that's k plus 1 times k times k minus 1 all the way to 1. So I can write that as k plus 1 times k factorial, because it's k plus 1 times k everything down. All right, that's a nice start, because I've got some information for k factorial. I know that k factorial, what do I know about k factorial? It's greater than 2 to the power k. All right, so k factorial is greater than 2 to the power k. That I've got. What do I know about k plus 1? Because what we're trying to get at is 2 to the power k plus 1, which is the same as 2 to the power k times 2. So I've got something to relate to 2 to the power k, but what about 2? Do I, can I say that k plus 1 is greater than 2? I can, because k is greater than or equal to 4. So therefore, the product of k plus 1 and k factorial must be greater than the product of 2 to the power k and 2. And that's from basic number theory that we know. So we can say, therefore, k plus 1 factorial is greater than 2 to the power k plus 1. So this one's bigger than 2 to the power, uh, bigger than 2. This one's bigger than 2 to the power k. So if I multiply them, I must get something bigger than the product of those two. So there we go. So then we can conclude that pk plus 1 is true. And so pn is true. And now we must just watch out for all natural numbers n as long as n is greater than or equal to 4. So this one looked a little bit different, but the process stayed the same for mathematical induction.